Hello, folks. I was going to do uh, some more Atari console on PlayStation with the flashback collection this week, but I forgot that the Atari 400 Mini is coming out, and I did pre-order that. So I'm going to unbox it. So, like the 2600 Plus video, I am going to be talking a little bit about my history with the platform. Um, and also, if you're new to these, this is completely amateur hour, folks. I This is not monetized in any way. I bought this on my own money. I am recording these videos on an iPhone 12 mini. I have no external microphones, and I'm not going to have any because this is just for fun. I'm not scripted because intentionally because I just like doing it off the cuff. This is basically like you're visiting some old Gen X guy rambling about what it was like back in the day or something, I guess. It's part of my charm. What can I say? So, I got the box from Amazon. This is amusingly says, made to fit your order. Is it, is it Amazon? I mean, <laughs> yep, obviously fits inside of it, but there's clearly a lot of room here. All right, and we have a typical Amazon style zipper closure. This was delivered not by an Amazon delivery driver, but by uh, the Royal Mail. And just the, today is the 29th, uh, Friday the 29th, which is Good Friday, which a lot of companies don't recognize uh, as a holiday, including the Royal Mail in Scotland. Um, however, I work for uh, the Scottish Civil Service, and they do give us a wonderful four-day weekend for that. So thank you, Scottish government, for giving me the day off so I can do this. And look at this. So inside, we get a little box with a little bag in it. And after the wonderful advice I had in my unboxing video, I have my knack, the knack carpet knife to cut this bag open so you don't need to actually I don't need to do that see see this advice people unsolicited advice is not necessary I know I'm an adult I know how these things work and this bag is just got a little seal on it you just pull it open I don't even have to look at it it's so easy look how easy this is oh and the plastic comes off just like that there's loads of stuff written on the outside of this it says 25 jeux on the front, 25 games from Retro Games. It's rated, uh, German rating is USK 6, and the Peggy rating is 7. Uh, let's see, features. Emulates, Atari 400, 800, XL, XE, and 5200. Save and resume games, rewind up to 30 seconds, multiple scaling options, and CRT filter. Play games with in one of 12 attractive frames. You know, I've heard that before. 720p HD, 50, 60 hertz HDMI via USB. Connect your own devices, play your own games, and update the firmware. I appreciate that a lot, especially given the 2600 Plus issues, which I may or may not be able to resolve because of the fact that the only firmware update mechanism is via hooking it up to a PC with the correct USB port. And on the side here, we have all the physical kit, in addition to stating it. Um, I don't know which 800, that, that, that could be a 1200, but this is what I had. I knew friends who had the 400, which looks like that, and had a horrific, USB, um, or USB, me uh, membrane keyboard. Um, and in one friend's house, I remember we had Atari Age or some other kind of computer game uh, magazine, and we went through uh, programming in this, this thing in Atari Basic, um, saving to an external tape drive. This took like an hour 
uh, to find that either the game was buggy and we didn't actually know Atari Basic, so not bugs we could fix, uh, or was crap. So I, I have had the full the full experience, um, but the computer was so expensive when it came out that my family there was no way that was going to happen. Um, my, the first computer in my household was a VIC-20, Commodore VIC-20, that my grandfather bought, um, who, who was an insurance broker, uh, and he, uh, I think he got it with the, in order to learn computers, uh, thinking that this would in any way be necessary for him to get to grips with the real machine that he needed to do his office work, which was an IBM uh, 8088 running... Um, Lotus one two three or something like that. So <laughs> I ended up playing with the Vic twenty a bit. It could use the Atari joysticks, which was cool, and I had a cart single cartridge game, which was like Rally X, except they were mice instead of cars. So this is a nice quality box. So it has all the stuff written on it, um, and you open it up. This is it's easy to open, and inside, look at how cute. I mean, this thing is so tiny. Which is good because I have a very small space under my TV for it. So, like the 2600 Plus, we have a nice little tray thing. Um, no moving parts on this at all. The door does not open. Uh, the back has a USB port, a uh, USB A port, presumably for a USB key, which is good because that's the kind I have. Four USB ports on the front. I think the original one, these were all DB9 serial ports, um, HDMI, and USB-C for power. Input 5 volts, 1 amp. Fine. So pretty much, I think the 2600 Plus needs a little more juice, but that's cool. My serial number, 0001847. Oh, this is like a, a power switch. That's yeah, so one moving part. Click, click, click. And a red LED, presumably to tell us it's on, but none of these function buttons work either. Um, but the computer that I had in high school was an Atari 800 XL. Uh, so by that time, Atari's computer prices had come down a bit, and so that was more affordable. And so I did my gaming mostly on the Atari 8-bit after that. I'd still have my 2600, and so I would occasionally, you know, do a bout of um, Atlantis or something like that, but mostly I was I was playing 8-bit. And because I didn't have any money, I was mainly playing pirated games. We, me and some friends were trading floppies. We lived in Silicon Valley uh, I lived at the time in San Jose and uh, California. So they weren't hard to get a hold of, including stuff that, you know, would have been, was considered positively rare, like uh, the original version of Star Raiders uh, on the 8-bit, which was, of course, or our start was a Star Raiders, Star Raiders 2, but it was originally badged uh, The Last Starfighter and tie in with the game, or the game, the film Last Starfighter, and had a um, an opening screen uh, calling for people to fight Zor and the Kodan Armada and all that. Um, but it was Star Raiders. All right, so we have a little booklet. It tells us what what. Unpacking it. Before connecting cables, check the contents. We should have a Ford Mini, a CX stick, an HDMI cable, USB power cable, and this booklet. Well, it's a good thing the booklet says that you should have this booklet. Otherwise, I wouldn't know that I should have the booklet. Right? Okay, so the stick comes. It's sat in this, and the cable cords plug folded up in that. So that's cool. It looks like it's got a pretty long cable, a little plastic sleeve. Uh, let's see. Yep, yeah, doesn't have a lot of play, so that's cool. It's it's like the um, the CX40 Plus that came with the uh, 2600 Plus. There's a little button down here. Just click, click, click. Two little buttons up here. Nothing, no labels on any of them. Big red one, and this. The ring has clicky points in four directions at the four cardinal points. So there's all the buttons on there. 
And then there's another small box. Oh, and look, I hope she point this out. The wonderful Atari Fuji in rainbow colors. Uh, anyway, so I had the the 400 X or the 800 XL, and um, that was my computer. And through my first year at university, when uh, basically I had a, a <laughs> the letter quality printer, which I can't remember the designation for, which was so noisy that everyone on my hall hated it every time I had to print a paper. But I got it because I was like, this looks better. This will look like it's type written and does but it's also super chattery and wow deafening and i also had a 1050 floppy drive which was just the worst engineered piece of crap um i had my worst moment was i had a paper to write that was like 10 pages long it took me hours go to go to save it nothing happens um, <laughs> and of course, what turned out to have happened is when I opened up the, the floppy drive, okay, so this is the power cable. It's a beige, like the console. It's kind of neato. And this is kind of groovy. The not sealed, but in a Ziploc bag is the HDMI cable and they have little covers. I like that it's kind of a bit chunky, which might cause a problem depending on how much room you have between HDMI ports. I don't think it should though, but it does, it is reminiscent of an old uh, serial cable, uh, which is neat. Anyway, back to the, 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 the tale of woe in the Atari 1050 or, uh, floppy drive. So I go and open the thing up and what do I find? Well, it has a, a instead of a direct drive set up, it's, it's got some kind of pulley system. And you would think, and a normal, like a sane person, would have a pulley set up that would have two different wheels with a groove that a belt would sit in. And Atari did one with a groove and the other without. So over time, the belt that was used hooking the, the drive mechanism up to the, the center spindle of the floppy itself would slip off, at which point, obviously, the read-write, nothing's happening, right? The disc can't spin anymore. And... Uh, being as it was a serial interface that uh, if you had something like that happen, you couldn't just disconnect it and plug it back in. You had to reboot the whole damn machine, which meant that anything you hadn't saved is gone because it's in the volatile memory. Um, as needless to say, after that, I had to rewrite the entire paper from scratch. I remembered most of what I was saying. Um, and so it wasn't the end of the world, but I was saving every five minutes because and after that it became like, you know, I have just expected it, uh, <laughs> that the freaking belt would, would come off. Anyway, Atari's hardware, not necessarily the greatest, although the 800XL itself was, was fine. Um, all right, so the setup, yes, I can see all the ports. The left-hand port is player port one, and then two, four, great. Make sure your TV switched off, blah, 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 blah. Connect the CX stick to the leftmost, connect the power cable. Um, yep, yep, yep. Okay, so the, the little red lead uh, is in fact, I mean, I don't really need a dust cover for this. It's not like it has any openings. But that will indicate the power is on and you should get a greeting and all that jazz. All right, the sticks, functions, all the, the functions can be performed with the joystick. Oh, well, that's cool. Directional stick, fire button, shoulder button, four-way button ring, two function buttons, menu and home. I mean, it, it has labels for them in here, but these things are not actually labeled on the physical stick itself. Prompts for which buttons to place to perform are at the bottom of the screen. In the game's carousel, press up to view a help screen. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Press, pressing home will take you back to the carousel. Button combination functions. So home, which one's the home one? The home one's the right hand of these. So that's this one. And this is the menu button. So home and back or left on the stick. Activates rewind, home and menu. Activator, deactivate a virtual keyboard. 
and you can do it in right or left-handed mode to switch joystick in a left-handed mode while the joystick is rotated at the fire button at the top right. Press menu, shoulder, that. Okay. The support page and a QR code, and, and that's it. Really interesting. I thought it would say something in here about how to load software from the USB port on the back of the machine. Ah, okay, the QR code. Please visit the website retrogamesbiz slash link slash the 400 dash mini stroke support. For more information there, you can find full instructions for the 25 built-in games and download the 400 Mini User Manual, which explains in more comprehensive detail the functions of the 400 Mini, including how to add your own games via a USB memory stick. Well, so there you go. I mean, I, uh, I guess this is nice enough, but some basic instructions would have been nice. I mean, 8-bit games are not necessarily the most clear what you're supposed to be doing they, they've got you know you've got a keyboard so there's potentially loads of additional functions so i, I i'm kind of not a hundred percent thrilled with that and i would have thought at the very least you would have put the how to put games on your usb stick in this because that website isn't going to be around forever anyway I'm going to go and hook this thing up, and then I'm going to do a little Let's Play here. I'm not just an unboxing and go guy. It's like, who cares? I mean, yes, this is a piece of plastic. Unlike the 2600 Plus, there is no fabulous aroma of something that has just been molded from processed petroleum. Uh, but it's very, it, it feels, it's got a little bit of heft to it, you know, and it's very solid. It's a nice looking thing. I hope it works as well. I've been reading some very bad stuff about this stick and and uh, its oversensitivity to heading down and di diagonal directions. And I'm praying that mine is not one of these so afflicted because it appears to be a physical build thing, not a software thing. But that's we break and I will return to run through some games and hopefully I can uh, figure out and I'll eventually I'll do a let's play of my own curated collection of 8-bit of uh, computer and uh, 5200 cartridge software um, which is already on my key and hopefully will be ready to go since I have in fact read this website in advance and fingers crossed my ROMs actually work anyway thanks for watching and let's play some Atari So, my HDMI 1, I've got my 7-way HDMI switch. Switch to port 7. I replaced my old 5-port 1 with a 7. Or 4-port, was it 4? I can't remember. 4-port. Well, the 7, for the express purpose of doing this, of having these things have their own little switches. And let's see if I can show this without jacking up my my wonderful camera position too much so you can see right below there I've got the 400 mini sitting next to 2600 plus and cable on this joystick is about hmm, looks like it's about two meters should be fine all right, so let's see if the magic happens. Oh, got a red light on the front of the thing. <clears throat> nice. Okay. So F is the red button, I guess. Top, next. So press top on the ring. Enable 50 hertz. Enable that. Choose this if you're outside North America. Well, I mean, okay, but I mean, I have a modern television. It should can do both. So I, 
And my ROMs, I don't even know what the hell region they are. They are. So we're going to find out, I guess. All right, run television test with left on the ring. Okay, I can still see, except the setting. And here we go. We have some music. Some kind of chiptune jazz. I don't know what it is. Let's see, we got air ball, isometric puzzle game, uh-huh. Try to find an evil wizard spell in the game. All right. Don't run out of air, explode. Oh, I just pressed, okay, I didn't see that. So press up for help. Interact with object with the shoulder, fast slow pause, interact with object, jump. Uh-huh. Special actions, interact with object. Looks like the same special options as pressing. Oh wait, there's more special actions. Oh, I see. How to rewind, yeah, okay. Okay with that. Okay. Start game. Well, let's try it. I've never played this. No. Right, if I press get the spell book. Okay. Oh, what? Alright, so I'm moving this isometric. Wait, where did I go? What did I do? Wait, what's going on? Um. I can't tell the control that I'm feeling here is a result of an isometric display or what, but if I press left, right, I'm going up. If I press up, I'm going left. If I press left, I'm going down. Is this what's supposed to happen? Okay, so how do I go? If I press down, nothing. Okay. Sure. Okay, can I go? No, I want to go up the up the stairs. How do I go? No, I want to go up. So if I press. Okay. Well, I cannot figure out what the heck's going on with the controls here. Am I? Is it in left-handed mode or something? Well, if I turn it on its side, it almost makes more sense because then left and right are up and down. But I'm not going up the stairs. Do I have to jump up the stairs? Okay, let's... Ah, okay, I do. Alright. Uh-huh. I want to go... No, I want to... Oh boy! This is going to be fun! I can't tell if this is the game or the controller. So let's... That's enough of that. How do I get out of this? Okay, that. Right. Let's play something that should have some pretty conventional controls then. Asteroids. Classic. Okay, fire, fire engine, activate defenses, right and left. Yep, select view, defense option. Okay, well, I guess there's choices. Does this mean it's like Asteroids and Asteroids Deluxe? I mean, it looks kind of like the 2600 version of Asteroids to me. And it's fired up. All right. Um, menu. Nothing's happening. Why is nothing happening? All right, shields. Okay, so I can choose between shields, hyperspace, invert. I'm pressing top to cycle through these things. No effect. Well, I want some effect. Let's have shields. And how do I start the game? Shoulder start? No. Does menu start? No. Fire button. Does that start? No. Okay, right starts. Boy, you know. So I've played Asteroids on the 2600 with the original cart in an emulated form, and I have played the 78 version of Asteroids, and wow, this is the worst version of Asteroids I think I've played out of all of them. It's, 
it, it doesn't, it's like, why is it so slow? Is, did I pick like a mode that's... Okay, this... I mean, seriously, the 2600 version was so colorful and responsive, and this is just, I don't know what the issue is, the emulator or what, but I mean, even just the asteroids are just... And the hit detection, what was that? That rock wasn't that close to me. All right, you know what? Enough of that. Okay, basketball, you know, I'm just not going to do that. Battle zone. Ooh, now this is different. I've seen shots of Battle Zone for the 2600 and it looks pretty rubbish. Um, but this is actually trying to do uh, what you call them? Vector graphics, it looks like. Fire, select difficulty level. Right, left, forward, and back. Pretty straightforward. Okay, left and right. Yeah. Wow, the rate of fire is dog slow. I mean, I spent quite a lot of time in the arcade playing the arcade game. And I mean, this is all right, I guess. I mean, the character has more segments than the 2600 version. Ooh, Ooh the shots are fast. Oh, we have a lot already, geez. Give a guy a chance. Wait, why is it shooting? I'm shooting, I wasn't pressing the button. What the hell? Oh, so I'm hitting the shoulder button. Yeah, there's where the shoulder button. Why is the shoulder button fire? Like, who's gonna be doing that? The problem is when you're shooting, you can't move. So I was sitting there going, Ooh. you know, it's a, it's a graphical improvement over the 2600 version. I give it points for that. Control with the stick is, is all right. I mean, it's a little stiff. I would like it to be, it feels all right. You know, I mean, it feels like a CX-40 controller, right? Oh, dead. Boulder Dash. I have played this game on the Commodore 64, uh, one of the C64 collections on my Evercade. I am not, um, I know it's got a following. I'll just say that. All right, start. Reset the level, left and right. Special actions, it's the same rubbish. So that's fine. Let's do it. Cool. I'm pressing the button, it's not starting. Oh, I have to press menu first to get the menu. Alright, if I remember correctly, so this game you're trying to collect the gems and not get crushed by the rocks. Pretty easy, right? Oh, except it's not. Ha <laughs> ha! It is not easy, folks. Wait, oh no. I have to press the button to get to give me a my life? Come on. All right. And there's a clock counting down. My favorite feature in any game, the ticking clock. Oh God, that was really, these rocks fall so fast. Okay. Wait, why did that go over there? Oh, nope. Whoa. Yeah, so don't stop. If you run under a rock, just carry on with your... Oh, that was close. Big flash on the screen. Don't know why that happened. 
All right. Yeah, look at me go. I exited successfully, I might add. Okay, cool. So if I want to save, what was it? I just press, I press that. Is it auto save? Save games. Oh, so I have to save it to a game slot. Save slot. So can I only save four games? Is it four games per game? Lock, unlock. Okay. So if that means if I go back to Berserk, wait, no, I don't want to do that. If I go back to Berserk and I say, okay, so each game has four save slots. And this is stuff I should have done before I started playing it probably, but whatever. We get there eventually. Menu for options, display options. Another thing I should have done already. Four by three, it does that look like breakout? Super breakout even. Four by three or pixel perfect. I'm gonna choose pixel perfect every time. Enable CRT effect. All right, so it does scan lines. Uh, I don't know. See, scan lines for Atari 8-bit and 2600 don't mean as much to me because of the fact that I used both of these machines with a black and white TV initially. So the scan lines didn't really, they weren't as obvious, I guess. I mean, they were obviously there, but when you're playing black and white, you just, it all just kind of blurs together. So, all right, let's look at the frames. What do we got? Nothing. Colors, more colors, a thing, another thing. These pixelated things, pixelated mountains. Uh, do I want any of these? Honestly, I don't. All right, so I've got my selection. A language thing that I remember. Advanced options. System, except the level of menu music. Okay. System information. This is the build. All right. Shut down device. Legal notices. Uh -huh. Do a factory reset. Okay. Okay. Looks like elevator action, but you're painting. We can choose between different painters. All right. Trigger is the skill. So we have a choice of six. Options, sticks, select painters, start again. So I don't want to add no. well you can play up to four players with this. Alright. Okay. Is that not a lift? What is that? Are these plungers? What the hell is it? I don't understand what I'm looking at here. Okay. No, I don't want to... Oh, for the love of God, why? It is a lift. Ticking clock, my favorite feature in any game. So I finished it. Cool. 
Capture the flag. You are invader. Okay. So I'm, there's a radar at the bottom to show me where I'm going. Looks like we have two dots to represent each other. Showing me the computer POV, I mean, that's almost like cheating really, isn't it? I mean, this is very ambitious. I give them points for that. Oh, wait. Okay, so I'm gonna turn. It's a dead end. This is really being able to see both players at the same time is a bit disorienting. My eyes keep wandering from one side to the other, and I'm getting confused. No, wait, don't do that. Okay, one player game now. Log fleas right off the bat. That seems a bit unfair. I gotta say, this kind of game, arcade type games, the 8-bit just doesn't feel good for it. The, 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 I don't know what the heck the source of this is. If it's a, a 2600 feels better to me and the 7800. But I think I like the 26 of the best. Visually, graphically, looks fine. But control-wise, not as tight as I would like. Castles. Okay. All right, it looks like a bear. The gems are kind of weird. They're all X's. Oh, control's all right. Put a little... Music's good. Got my honey already. Whoa, okay, I've done an accidental. <clears throat> it wouldn't be Crystal Castles with me playing if I didn't accidentally take a turn that I didn't want to take. Huh. Oh, you don't get the cutscene? Oh, you disappoint me now. The English software company. Okay, by Adam Billiard. Okay, so what's the select? What am I, what am I, I don't understand. What am I selecting? Oh, is that starting it? Where am I? Whoa, what happened? Okay, just doing the old press down. Oh. Controls are pretty forgiving. Oh, I don't know what that was. Oh, Powerball? What, what is this, my Pac-Man? Huh, what happened? I hit something? If I press break, it just, all right, it slows it down. I hit some water. I don't want to run into those. Countdown, final 10 seconds. Is that fuel? What is, what's going on? I mean, I'm not, yeah, I need to read the instructions to figure what the heck's going on, but uh, not bad, not bad, I guess. All Wokes from NovaGen Software. So this is like a tank kind of game. Yeah. I 
I'll tell you what, it's got a better pace to it than Battle Zone does, that's for sure. Okay, this is like the final boss. things. I was just seeing what would happen if I hit one. 17 enemies now. Now oh, I think I've got a flavor for this. It's, it's groovy. This is kind of like playing um, Hubert with default controls on MAME instead of setting them to diagonals. And I don't like it. I want to hit diagonals. I don't want to hit left and right to go diagonally. So right is down and then left goes that way and up. <sighs> and up goes top and down goes. All right. So this is a problem with it. I could basically have to hold the controller on its side to make it go, or at an angle, to make it do what I want it to do. But why can't, why aren't those ones changing color? I don't get it. What, do I have to, wait, what did that, uh, okay. I have little patience for that kind of stuff. Henry's out. I pick up that and pick up that. Oh, the hand's fine. Wait, what? What? Why did that wall kill me? What the hell? Oh, so that's what killed me. I thought it was the hand, but it was the... That was... Hmm. Delightful. All right, let's try one more time. Oh, wow, it gives you loads of time to get through. Trying to get the crown? I gotta be lined up just right to go up these ladders, too. Oh, that, that thing's ridiculous! I can't get the bowler hat without. Alright. Yeah, alright. Alright, this game I've played. One player. You don't need two players. There's only one of me. Yeah, Jim won't mind. If I can press the button to speed it up. That's a handy feature. Get off my flowers, you lunatic! There's the other neighbor coming. Go get him, dog. Of course, after a while, the dog doesn't like hearing the noise and tries to kill you as well. well if you weren't trying to get me, yeah, get those guys. Get them, get them, dog. So I'm trying to cut the grass, basically, and I've accidentally run over some flowers, which are these colored bars. On the Sommeter 64, you can tell that they're actually flowers. Over, kill, kill him. So 
one of these guys is the guy who's... Ah, oh, the dog didn't like my mower. Oh! Took it back. Outrageous. Uh-huh. I used to have this game. I remember this. You have to collect all the lanterns. Ah, oh, this guy sucks. I remember him. You want to get all the lanterns. Get out of my face, sumo man. killing me so far. How many hits can I take? This is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> what am I supposed to do now? open up on the floor. Oh, for Pete's sake. Oop. Got a dog now. Ah! Cry man feels no pain. in so long. I don't know what the hell is going on. Well, this is like the moving thing here. And then you got the, the thing that teleports back and forth. Oh, can't climb up that. There's a ladder. All right, cool. I dig it. species. Gollumer, Bonzoid, Mechatron, Legzy, Flapper. That'll be a humanoid. Uh-huh. Species chosen for this colony. Press option to change selections. And you're landing on the planet Errata. Okay. Need to see the landing in real time? Come on. Here's the other guys. They're all the same species, but not me. The ship will be back in six months. Uh huh. Give me a strategy game. I really need the instructions to understand what I'm supposed to be doing here. I have to wait for the ship to leave the screen. Press your button to select a plot. Um, okay. Now what? Computer's taking his turn. Uh huh. Press your stick button to start. Your money equals 600. Need a mule. Need a mule. Okay. 
fitting me all. Or a Smith or outfitted for food. No meals allowed in the pub. I didn't gramble. I got a mule. Acid rainstorm. Food up it up. Energy reduced. Okay. Right, this feels like I read the manual game. I'm gonna bow out of it. Oh. Two spiders at once, really? That seems a bit excessive. There's a bee. Again. I mean, I'm impressed that they they did this at all, but I still prefer centipede on the 26 and 7800 to this. Uh huh. Yeah, I've played this game. I remember you have to like walk over everything, oh, and if you walk over fall from any significant height you die significant being whatever anything above ground basically look at the little smiling mutants are still my friend oh i went too far and i died i hate that come on Woo! This game is one of these games that was on like every platform conceivable. I don't think there was a single computer that Minor 2049er was not published for. Because that was one of the things about having an Atari back in the day is it seemed like everybody, oh for God's sake, that everybody was developing for the Commodore 64. And I would go into the computer game shop and I'd be like, man... Why can't they make it for Atari? So I was always happy whenever I saw an Atari version. Even when it was a game like this that I otherwise would not care about. I honestly don't remember if I had this one or not. What the hell? It's like, uh... Yeah, whatever. Still got the one base. Alright, we know. This is going to be like a slightly souped up version of the 2600 game. Because I mean, remember, the Atari 2600 was an 8 bit machine. It just, the processor, you know, the 8 bit computers had more memory and, you know, the games weren't as limited in their size. The carts were bigger and all that kind of jazz. That isn't bad. You know, it's, it's freaking this or command. What do you want? Game designed by Mike Riley from Datasoft. Okay, one player game. Okay. Oh, did I not want to be staying there? Okay, got it. Look at me, I'm getting things. I'm not sure what things. Some kind of critter coming after me? Oh, I can't go around. Uh-oh. It's not looking good for Mr. Riley, I'll tell you that. What the heck? 
So I don't want to go that way? I don't understand. Whoop. These are truffles, I'm guessing. I can't go below that strata. Oh. Okay. That was interesting. Alright, Ozark Softscape. Court has finally granted you an audience. Promise to find a new world and return with golden glory for crown. Four ships, hundred men, etc. I can go into the pub. Here, you may pause your journey. Uh huh. What is this? My house. Discover in the new world. The sun is rising in a day. So I guess I went to sleep. Outfitter. Okay, I got all my stuff. That's great. Why is it making me do this? Can I just go? And now it's automatically getting on the ship. Leaving the old world, you're ready to begin your journey. You're west of the Canary Islands. Further west is the unknown. We hope to find a new world. Uh -huh. I'm sailing west. Speed, half, depth, deep. I'm not sure why there's orange dots on the sea. Or are they salmon colored dots? I can't tell. One of the two, they're orangish. Are we really gonna make me, is, is this gonna take like weeks to play to, in order to, 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 to get where I'm going? How about a compass direction? I mean, I know west is this way. Oh my God, I mean, feeling this. Okay. Uh, look at this. Right, let's bring up the map. Terrace. Fighter Zero. Cities Eleven. Destroyers. Embry, no fighters, Cyridus, uh -huh. what's this purple thing, space station, we're going to fight the Zion squadron now, In space, all right now i got to get the big ship, Victory! There's another one. Got it. And there's a the big Kodan warship. I mean, uh, uh, whatever the you know. Kodan control ship. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die.
Shocking. I don't remember ever seeing this game. This is kind of interesting though. Look, I'm sailing on the seas. Oh, it's like Space Invaders. <laughs> cool. You know, I, I, I recognize the artwork from this game. With the ship, with the naval ship with a face on it, which is kind of weird. Oh, look at my ship. Oh no. Yeah, this one, I kind of like this. This is cool. I'm always up for a Space Invaders clone, I'll tell you. Swain, now you're promoted. Great. And this is kind of groovy. It's an early music rhythm type of. Oh, I mean, it reminds me a little bit of games like, um, oh, what the heck's that one? Not chase, not chase the waste the sun, but. A game not too long ago it was multi-platform. I had it on the Wii U and the PlayStation. Oh, I didn't hold the button down long enough. That's not bad. That's that's a not a bad Wii game there. The other thing we want to know is can I access my stuff on here? So the 400 basic current media. What? Um, right. Okay, I'm back. So this is the thing with this USB key stuff. I had gone and loaded a bunch of stuff on there on the basis of someone posting a link in the Atari Age forums to the config or the mentioning how it was set up to, to run stuff off the C64. The 400 Mini, uh, when you put a USB key in there, it automatically formats it, wipes everything out, formats it to however it needs it to be formatted. Um, and sticks a couple of files on there, one of which is that Atari Basic uh, that I saw before. And one is a config file for the Atari Basic. So I basically went and I was like, well, I'm looking at my USB key and that's what's on it. Where's everything else? Because it formatted it and blew it all away. So I had to go back into my Mac, uh, plug the thing in there and copy it all back into place. Now, I have a load of stuff here. It seems to automatically be detecting some of these things as carts and some of them as floppies, so that's kind of cool. And for multi-disc games, in my case the alternate reality ones, you have to, um, well that's interesting, it's suggested to put them in to folders to to select them. So I obviously have to look at this some more to figure this out. Um, and there's loads of settings for each one of these. So you take what model, it defaults to 800. I have no idea what the heck this was. Um, you know, the display and all this kind of jazz is like, wow. And you can map the controls, I guess. Or what's happening? Did it crash? Okay, looks like I managed to crash my 400 Mini. Oh, that worked. So this is gonna be a lot of trial and error, as I suspected, because some of these games have file extensions that I, I think the 400 Mini isn't using. God, this actually looks like the frickin' arcade game. 
For the uninitiated, Blaster was a sequel to Robotron that used a first-person perspective, um, but was not polygon-based. It was instead using uh, raster graphics, <laughs> which for a first-person view is uh, an interesting choice. I first encountered this game playing the Williams Arcade Classics on the PlayStation. version of Defender kicks some ass. Much better than Stargate on the 2600 and obviously Defender on the 2600. Oh boy, hit the bomb. How does this, you know, I've got the 7800 version of Donkey Kong. Sound is certainly better than that. 7800 sounds like ass. Interestingly, the screen's flipped. Now, does this have the correct second stage? Yes, unlike the 7800, I get the girders. Thank God for that. Oh, come on, really? compared to Pauline, though. You get me. Yes.
So, in summary, the 400 Mini, not a bad piece of kit. I mean, the built-in games are much easier to get to grips with. If you're going to load without the addition of your own ROMs, though, not worth it to me personally. I don't have enough nostalgia. Certainly, the nostalgia I have is not for the games that come with it, other than Star Raiders. And is it worth it? Is it worth 100 quid to be able to play Star Raiders on your TV? 8 bit computer Star Wars. Mm, I don't know how much you like that game. It's a pretty cool game. Definitely one that I spent a lot of time with as you know, the last Starfighter. But, um,. I don't know. I have to go and mess around with my ROM files and try different file extensions because clearly either they're not what they claim to be or the emulator that the 400 Mini is using is way more finicky than the X Atari 800X uh, emulator that I used to use on my Mac. So I will be revisiting with a follow-up Let's Play of some curated titles from that when I can get them to work. I've had mixed results. I've made some interesting discoveries, like a really fantastic 8-bit version of Defender um, that was a nice surprise. Um, but in order to get the full satisfaction out of it, there's like games like Gremlins and Conan and uh, Goonies that i got to get working on there. So uh, until next time, folks, Keep gaming.